Hello there and welcome back to my course on Access 2019. In this module, we're going to take a look at how we can create a table and field. So essentially how we can create our first working database. Now, the main example will be the Tor database and we created a starting point a little while ago and now we're going to add some content. Now, before we begin, there is one thing that I want to do just to make this look a little bit less messy, and that is deal with that big long title that we have running across the top of the screen. It doesn't look particularly tidy, and we have a lot of superfluous information in there, which we don't really need to see at this stage. So I'm going to change that title. And if you remember back to the last module when we were looking at access options, there was an area in there where we can go and make an amendment to this big long title. So let's jump back into our options by clicking on File and going down to Options. And I'm going to give this a more appropriate title. So in this application title box, I'm going to type in Esprit de Tour, Trips of a Lifetime, and click on OK. And there we go, that instantly looks a lot tidier. Now, the core of any database that you create is the data. And the data in modern databases is held in tables. And for this Tor database, we're going to have a number of different tables. And the first table will contain the details of our core trips. And when I say trip, what I mean is a trip is one entity. And during the course of the year, we may run the trip several times. And each instance of a trip, we're going to call a tour. So for example, a trip that we run all year round might run 15 or 20 times throughout the year. So that one trip will have many tours. And what I've done is I've put together an example for you of the information that we might want to keep about each trip. So I've put together an example of the information that we might want to keep about each trip. And you can see it there in this notepad file that I have on the screen. So each trip will have a code, GCA, and GCA is basically an abbreviation of the name of the trip. So in this case, Grand Canyon Family Rafting Adventure. And there are several types of trip, family, escorted, group, activity, and landscapes. The activity level for the trip is moderate, and the country this trip operates in is the USA. We then have a description of the trip, so just a couple of lines just there. And of course, later on, we might add more detail into this, such as a more detailed itinerary. But at the moment, we've just got a very brief description. The duration of this trip is eight days, and the price range, excluding flights, is $3,080 to $3,112. So with this pricing, individual tours, so instances of the trip, the prices will vary depending on when the trip is and how much demand there is. So all of this info is going to be stored for this particular trip. Now one particular part of the trip, the type, I'm not going to store in the trip table at the moment and the reason for that will become apparent a bit later on. So I'm going to skip type and I'm going to set up everything else. Now, one or two things I want to highlight just here. What I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to make a deliberate error and I'm going to correct it later on. So sometimes one of the best ways to do these things will happen later when you become more familiar with access. So let me give you an example of that. Look at the trip definition. So it says country USA. And you might say to yourself, well, surely some of the trips will go to more than one country. Shouldn't we have a list of countries that are visited on the trip? And the answer to that is yes, you should, but we're going to deal with that later on. So the main point I'm trying to get across here is that it's a good idea to try and get things as right as you can early on, but be aware that you may need to make changes as we go through creating this database. And sometimes changing things in database design can be quite hard. So some things are easy to change and some not quite so easy. You would have to go through and do what I would call 
a little bit of faffing around in order to get it how you want it. So just be aware of that as we move through. So just try and get everything as right as you can from the outset. So with all that in mind, let's create our first table. And this is the table that will hold the trip information. I'm going to go up to the Create tab and I'm going to click on the Table button. And you can see that this has been given a default name of Table 1. We can see that just lurking there on that tab. And Table 1 opens in Datasheet View. And again, remember that you can check your views right down in the bottom right hand corner. You can see that the one highlighted in grey is the one currently in use. So I can confirm there that I am in fact using Datasheet View. Now the other button we have in the bottom right hand corner is Design View and we did look at this earlier. So let me click on Design View. Now one thing that happens quite a lot when you're working on a table is that whenever you do something in terms of design or even creating the table, you'll be asked if you want to save. So I am actually going to go in and I'm going to save this table. Now this is the trip table, so you might be tempted just to call it something like trip. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow a convention whereby the objects have a prefix which identifies the object. So in case of tables, the prefix is TBL. So I'm going to call this TBL trip, which identifies that as a table to me. Now, this might seem a little strange, but I might later on have maybe a form where I maintain trip info. But that would have a prefix of FRM trip. So I would know the difference between the table and the form. So now I'm in design view for the trip table. And in design view, I can see the fields that make up the table. So by default, I have a single field. It has a field name of ID. It has a data type of auto number. And I can put a description in. Now the description I'm going to put in here is unique trip ID. And this is not the same as the trip code. The unique trip ID is a unique identifier and it's a very important part of the table. The importance of that unique ID is best explained in an example. So let's suppose I set up this Grand Canyon trip and it runs for a few years, and then we decide to drop it. If then later we create a different trip with the code GCA, we would need to identify it, and we do that using the unique ID. And very often, unique IDs are not visible to the people that are using your table or your form or your database. They are more used in the back end. And unique IDs can be searched on for trips things like that. So these numbers will always be unique and they're very important when you're setting up any kind of trip. Now before we add fields to the table, let's close this property sheet on the right just by clicking on the X, which gives us a little bit more room. Now let's add a second field. Now our second field, if we refer back to our notepad, is going to be this first line in our trip information, so trip code. So let's add in a second field. So this is where I'm going to list that trip code. So I'm going to say uh, code as the field name. Now the default data type is short text. And you'll see that there are many different data types that we can work with. And we're going to go through some of these as we move through the course. Now in description, I'm just going to type in three character trip code. And with this row selected, you can see the properties of that field in the lower half of the screen. So in the lower half, we have this section here called field properties. And if you look at that first section there where it says field size, we have the number there of 255. And what that means is that we can have a maximum of 255 characters input into this. Now, I doubt very much that I would ever have a trip code that's 255 characters long. So we can change this. And I know that all of my trip codes are going to be a maximum of three characters long, so like GCA. So I'm going to change that to three, 
which will kind of restrict the amount of characters to three characters only that you can enter into that specific field. Now, a lot of these other properties we're going to come back to, but there are a couple that I would like to point out. So just here where it says required, and it's currently set to no. So what this is saying currently is that in order to store a trip, this table doesn't need a code. Now, that's not correct. I want to make sure that in order to store this trip, every trip has a code. So I'm going to click the drop down at the end and change that to yes, a code is required to store this information. Then underneath that, we have allow zero length. So again, this is set to yes. So what that essentially means is that the code can be zero characters in length. Now, again, that's not what I want. So I'm going to select the drop down and select no. And finally, we have index. Now, is this field going to be indexed yes or no? And I'm going to explain a little bit more about indexing at the start of the next module. For now, the answer is yes, but the trip code cannot be duplicated. So let's just change that to yes, no duplicates. So now I basically have the definition of the second field in my trip table. We're going to be going into this in more detail in the next module, so please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free Microsoft Access 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, click over there. And click over there to watch all the videos in this Access 2019 playlist.